number seven. <laughs> That's not even seven. <laughs> Tip number seven. Hey everybody, hope you guys are all doing well today. Nice to see you guys back in the new year. Sorry for going AWOL for like the longest time ever. So I have been working on a lot of essays these past few months about myself and um, I was really inspired to make a video about um, embracing diversity, embracing being different and stuff. Growing up I was often pretty, um, I always set aside my own culture and where I was from apart and tried to take myself as American and I tried to be as white as possible if that makes any sense. And um, as I got older I realized that diversity, being different and being from somewhere else is a very unique thing. It's something to very much cherish. And so here are some tips about embracing where you're from. Let's get to it. So tip number one is surround yourself with a lot of diverse people. And the reason why I say this is because the more diverse, diverse environment you live in, the more you are open-minded, the more you're open to new ideas and beliefs, and the more you are taught to tolerate other different, different cultures. You are taught all these customs when you open yourself up to diversity that you may not see before. So have friends that are from different parts of the world, from different backgrounds and ethnicities, that speak different languages and cultures, and I, I assure you it will help. Tip number two that really got to be tip number one is definitely embrace your own skin, your own skin color, your name, your the language that you speak. It is so critical to actually embrace that stuff, never to be shy from it or embarrassed of it or hide it or try to put yourself aside from it because in the end you are your own person, you are your own body, you have to learn, have to love it and respect it and embrace it. Um, for example, for me I have a really different odd name and growing up I never really liked it actually. And then here I am now, much, much more older, and I love my name because it's something so different. No one else has it. It's so easy to not have to get mixed up with someone else's name. It's nice when you have someone come up to you and ask you, where is your name from? What does it mean? Questions like these are so important to me, and I value them so much because it gives me a chance to explain my backstory. The next tip is, is to learn about the culture, the country where you are from or where you originated from. Um, one of the best people you can ask is your parents, obviously. If you do do this frequently, visit the country where you're from. That will always, always, always change you in so many ways. And I think when you live in a country like America, it's pretty hard to understand the lifestyles of others, the different customs, the beliefs and stuff. But once you step foot in a foreign land, you learn so much about its society, its cultures, its practices, its norms, that you will start to see the world much more differently once you come back here. The next tip, tip number four. For example, I always struggled to find and ask myself if I was more Sri Lankan or if I was more American. And going to this conference, I was told that I can be both. And that's what I'm here to tell you guys, is that you guys can be both. Fifth tip is basically if you are from a country where it is a impoverished country or even a country where there is war going on, where there's some type of civil rights issue going on, or human rights issue going on, you definitely should try to find your place in it to help that country or help that situation. And so for me, I actually went to Sri Lanka, as some of you guys may know, and I volunteered at a children's home. And for me, volunteering at the children's home, I learned so many different things. I was open to a different world that I was not very much familiar with. And I also learned to appreciate more of being an American and what I have and my values and everything. If you're from Syria, you can probably, you know, you might not be able to go to Syria. Actually, don't go to Syria and get yourself killed, but, you know, try to fundraise like an organization here at home where you can help students, you know, fundraise a book drive and do that. And doing things like that will get you much more closer to your identity. Next tip is learn from your parents. If you have parents that are immigrants or that grew up in another country, you should be totally appreciative of that because you are going to be raised in a different environment than most of your friends are. And you can take that as an advantage rather than looking at it as a disadvantage. You know, growing up, I always was brought up in a very much different bringing compared to most kids. Um, you know, on Saturdays, well, most of my friends would go do gymnastics and sports and stuff. My parents would put me in math class. And I, that was something that I was used to. That was something that was part of my parents growing me and raising me up. And it was a huge part of me. Tip number seven. So the next tip is YouTube, 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 YouTube. And I cannot emphasize enough, that is probably the first thing I did when I was going through this whole identity crisis, was I went on YouTube and I discovered Superwomen, of all people, and being relatable 
to other people helps so much with the whole identity crisis and if you're able to relate with someone you're most likely going to be their friends and you're most likely going to go through this journey together of discovering yourself and this was like back in like I don't know, like 10 billion years ago when Superwoman was just getting in and she did a lot of videos about being Indian and brown and stuff and I would watch these videos and I could relate on, like, I never was able to relate to someone as I was able to relate to Superwoman. Number eight. So for tip number eight, this is actually one of my most favorite things to do and it's to basically read books about immigrating to the U.S., being diverse, being different. Um, one example can be Joy Luck Club, another one can be The Namesake by Jhumpa Lahiri, and there are plenty of other books. Um, for example, the author that wrote The Kite Runner, yeah, we all know about that book, um, also wrote this book called And the Mountains Echo. And the book basically talks about a girl and a boy being raised in Afghanistan, and then they moved over to the United States to live in San Francisco. And so that story talks about that upbringing and how their life is different now. And same with The Kite Runner, actually. The Kite Runner was about a kid that grew up in Afghanistan, in Kabul, and he moved to San Francisco, or he moved to the United States with his parents and family, or his dad. And um, it was about that whole story. So just reading books about it will definitely help. Next tip of advice is BuzzFeed articles. So I will link a lot of BuzzFeed articles down below about being Asian, um, having immigrant parents, stuff like that. They're pretty hilarious. They have some really funny memes. And um, definitely check those out. It will make you feel better. My last tip of advice, tip number 10, is quite ironic and quite funny. However, it is so, so, so true. And it is to start a YouTube channel. As weird as that sounds. I never was ever thinking that I'd start a YouTube channel that focused on cultural identity and being Sri Lankan and stuff like that. However, I did film the Sri Lankan um, tag video and I will tag that down below. And with that video, I realized that there's this whole community that's from the same country as me. And that just really got me, you know, to see more YouTubers that film videos about that. and. I learned to definitely know that I am not the only person going through this. So that is it for the video guys. I hope it was very much helpful and I hope it very much changed your way of thinking about being where you're from. You know, growing up I was often very shy about saying that I was a Sri Lankan and I was never very much appreciative of it. However, after this past year I realized how much of a person I am because I am Sri Lankan and how much I'm a per how much of a person I am because I am American. Um, there is not just one, there is both two. And, um, you know, just I felt like this was something that growing up I was often questioning myself in as my identity if I associated with one, co one country more than the other. And really, looking at it now, I do not associate it with one, I associate with both. And one thing it is, is to just balance it, you know? You can choose what type of stuff you want to believe, if you want to call yourself Sri Lankan or American, but in the end, you are who you are because of where you're from. Embrace being different because different is good. I'm gonna end with one of my favorite quotes from Dr. Seuss, why fit in when you were born to stand out? Bye guys. I can't even speak today, it's so freaking frustrating. Ugh. Okay.